I'm just looking over these numbers that Jane gave me of the number of volunteers that we have at the London Food Bank, and it's an astounding story. She has listed here about 3,000 volunteers that are in our database as a food bank. It's remarkable. And then when you add on to that, could be about a thousand more volunteers who are out in the community who don't really ever come to the food bank, but who help in their own way. I think of people like police and firefighters and others who help with food drives and other things. The firefighters we know have been there from the very beginning and they also use the fire halls as collection points during food drives. I think of people like grocery store managers and grocery store volunteers. We know so many of them and what they do is they all gather together in order to help the food bank during food drives. Or when we sometimes have, let's say somebody, we have a special need for another social agency that's requiring some fresh items or something, we can go to those stores and buy in bulk and then be able to provide those to the agencies. That's pretty great as well. But there's more. I think of all the school kids each year who will have a food drive, let's say, at Easter time. It's just part of their school activities. How many of those kids are there? And how many of their parents are involved? We have no idea. But the fruit of their effort shows up each year in thousands and thousands of pounds of food. I think of other groups, you know many of them, groups like the Grand Theatre, for instance, or CBC when it has its Sounds of the Season at Christmas time. I think of uh, the media groups and TV and in radio and, and also the London Free Press who sponsors our big spring food drive. I mean, the list actually goes on a fair bit. And then you would add, to add on to that groups like Business Cares. Now, Business Cares has about 700 businesses that are part of it. They all gather together for the big drive that happens in the month of December. And they donate an awful lot to us that helps to last us through the year, both money and food. How many people are involved in 700 businesses? We have no idea. They're not down at the food bank. They're out there in the community really assisting and doing what they can. I think of faith groups who aren't at the food bank either, but they have food drives. They also help to spread out the news about uh, poverty and food insecurity and people that are struggling. They're kind of really good at that and they help us to get the message out. I think of others, I think of seniors and seniors homes. Uh, Jane and I sometimes speak to those folks. They are very religious in how many times they will have food drives. They do it every year for the food bank. They're kind of uh, locked away in a thing and places kind of obscure, but they come together and do amazing things. What about groups like uh, post-secondary institutions? Fanshawe College, for instance, is partners partnering with us on the Farm in the Box program that we've talked about earlier, but they also have food drives for us and they also do research with us at the food bank itself, both in our lab and also in our greenhouse. That's fantastic as well. Western has often had different food drives from various initiatives. We're often speaking up there at various classes as well. Um, th that's really great. You know, uh, other groups, I think like your oncologist had uh, food drives um, and others. I mean, it's just the post-secondary side is, is pretty amazing because uh, uh, honestly, those groups, I think of the Ivy School students and I, I occasionally speak at their graduation or end of the year uh, events. And it's amazing to watch how much they build corporate social responsibility into their learning. Ivy is great at, at imprinting that into the curriculum, but these students are terrific at going out there and figuring out now using their own gifts and talents, how they will utilize that and do something with it. It's an amazing thing. I don't know how many of those people there are, but I do know that they have mushroomed. And I think in order to understand the success of the food bank for volunteering, there are a couple of reasons. One, it's not hard. You know, it's a difficult thing to volunteer at a hospice, for instance. It's hard to volunteer, let's say, in dealing with people who have mental illness or people who have drug dependency or people who suffer from substance abuse 
or people who are, you know, approaching the last part of their life in, in hospital wards and others. How do you volunteer and really help those people without some level of expertise? We take our hats off to those people. You know, I remember uh, during the food drive, do you, do you remember this, how nurses, doctors and others became heroes of the pandemic? We, we had a food drive in a neighborhood in North London up near Masonville. And, uh, you know, we, we went around with our cars and we weren't allowed to contact the people in the house. But they would stand at the threshold of their door. It was a beautiful summer summer's evening. And they would come out in the door and out at the curb, they would leave these bags of food or a check in, a, in an envelope or whatever. But in so many of the signs of, the, of those houses and the windows, there were these signs that showed that um, nurses and our medical staff are the true heroes of this pandemic. They were heroes. And then I remember going to the hospital once, I think it was UH, but they had, um, they had a food drive for the food bank and they were just burned out. I mean, it was just terrible for them. They hadn't seen their families as much. Also, some of them had come down with COVID and had returned, but you know their, their health was still a little weak. But these people spent all of their ta- time caring for the needs of other people in, in the medical community. This is how they helped. They were heroes and they still are. But I wonder if we still have those signs that showed what those medical staffs did during the pandemic for people. But I do know that in our hearts as a food bank, we still remember what they did for the food bank at that time. The volunteering that they did outside of the food bank at the places where they worked, holding food drives and other things. That's a very, very important memory of ours. But you think of kids coming down. So you have uh, classrooms that say grade threes. And they come down and they've got their, their supervisors there with them and maybe some parents as well. But we put the food all out on the table and they know the difference between a box of craft dinner, for instance, and a bottle of maple syrup. They definitely know where the candies are if somebody ever donates they, those and they do love craft dinner, it's true. But they know the difference between those things and they'll be able to build hampers because of that. Or if you're somebody that's trying to assist a family that's coming in, we have a number of folks who meet them at the front and we bring them into interview rooms and they're on computer and we have certain questions we feel that we need to ask them. But but these people have been there for a while and they know how to ask the questions, but the average person coming in to see the food bank in order to get help is probably their 15 minutes max. Right, so it's not it's not rocket science in that sense. You have to have empathy for the families that are coming in. You have to have accountability to the community to take down the information for those people because people want us to be able to at least have some measure of understanding where the food is going. But then also you really have the growth and availability of our volunteers who in those interview rooms, I've seen it so many times, they'll interview somebody who will say, yes, I just had an operation on my eye and have a patch on it. And, and you know, they, they come together and they talk about those things. It's, it's pretty amazing to see. So the food bank is fairly easy to volunteer at. We have a volunteer board, for instance. I myself, I've been at the food bank for almost 40 years now. And for two thirds of that time was a volunteer. So volunteerism was built into the heart of the food bank. For her first year there working full time, Jane was a volunteer. So we see ourselves as a volunteer driven organization guided by some people who know their community and who are busy trying to provide these volunteers both the resources and the expertise to go out there and be able to help their community. So yes, it's, it's fairly simple. It's love your neighbor. It's, it's, it's helping people in the most basic way. So that's one of the reasons the food bank is so successful when it comes to volunteers. The second, though, is the pandemic, and that's what this series has been all about. The pandemic, when it hit, and we need to remember what this was like. I certainly remember. I had just come home from Africa from some of our programs that we run over there and came here, and people weren't getting on buses anymore. Stores were limiting hours. Uh, Grocery stores were running out of certain stock, 
in order to help people. People were afraid of being out in public. People were masking up, wondering what type of mask that they should wear. You know, we were people were washing their hands at the food bank. We had the whole place kind of fumigated with a disinfectant that was to, to deal with that. And we had a London company that did all that free of charge, all within our cleaning systems, out in our warehouse in the front area and everything. The whole bill was like $70,000, but they provided it for their community. It was amazing, but we were all confused. Jane had to go down and meet with the staff and volunteers right at the beginning of the pandemic to inform them that we had met with civic leaders who had asked that the food bank remain open. They understood if we did not, but they said the amount of people that you're feeding plus the agencies, if you close down or you limit your operations, we don't know how we will respond to that or how we can respond to that. We listened and we said, look, we're all in. If if the community requires it and you believe that too as civic leaders, then, then we're all in. We'll organize and we'll start to make that happen. And then, you know, Jane went down to the food bank and, and worked at it. And uh, there were all these people that are insecure. To, can we go to that part of the food bank? Can we share food, passing it back and forth amongst many hands? You know, how do you do, how do you handle somebody who's got a cough? All of those, it was really tough. And yet we stayed open. And what was amazing about that is that, you know, people like Brian and others who, who are at the food bank and on the staff there, we have, I think it's eight staff, by the way, it's nothing compared to the 3,000 volunteers that we have there and the other thousand or so that's out in community. They're the ones that really make the whole thing work. But I remember Brian coming in one day and opening up the website and there were all these people that wrote in who wanted to volunteer. And what happened was, is the pandemic hit, they weren't going to school anymore. They might not be going to work anymore. They weren't going to church anymore, right? They weren't going out and playing baseball or things like that anymore because they couldn't do it. But they wanted to help their community and they were frustrated because every day all they could see on the news was the account of the almost oppression that was coming in on all of us because of COVID. And when they suddenly saw news that the food bank had helped this so many people or the food bank was helping this particular organization of homeless people, um, you know, the, the people said, you know, I, I want to help. And something happened there, a kind of uh, an awareness, a community awareness that seemed to envelop everybody. They were reading in the news about these medical staffs that we were seeing it, and they were helping. They were staying on the job. They were doing it. The police were, the firefighters were, other essential workers were. And now here was the food bank trying to do the same thing. People said, you know what? I, I could volunteer there. If they would accept me, I wonder if they would. So they would write in or they would phone me here at home or whatever. And we took them all. We took them all. It was confusing. And it was, it was an organizational nightmare. But these were people wanting to help other people. And you can't sit there and say, well, you know, it's COVID, but let, let's wait. Let's wait till it's over and see what, see what happens. You can't do that. These people knew that our community was on the ropes. It was on the mat. And they came out and they also came out in groups, groups like social service clubs, groups like seniors clubs, ball teams, hockey teams. The Grand Theater, you know, groups all like that. They all came out and were helping, all to having to be careful and, and um, cognizant of all the rules and regulations, medical things that came with that. We had to provide them all with masks. We had to write down all of their details. We had to make sure they had the proper COVID shots. We worked in harmony with the Middlesex London Health Unit to be able to uh, coordinate all of that and do the best we could. It was amazing. Over the three years where it was like that, our, our volunteer numbers at the food bank doubled. Now you think about that. People were looking in the news and they were seeing that agencies and businesses and schools and others were having to either close down or limit their operations altogether for very good reasons. I mean, part of the reason why the pandemic didn't get worse is because they obeyed those health guidelines. But when we went to the health unit and we, and we talk, spoke with Alex Summers, we also always have somebody from the Middlesex London Health Unit on our board. And recently it's been Kim Lupus. So she's from the health unit as well. Like we said, guide us, help us to get through this process. We've got a maximum amount of people helping all these other people that are coming in. But we need to know the guidelines to obey so that we can do it. And I'll be honest, there was confusion amongst our staff about how to do it, even differences. There was also a confusion among volunteers 
how exactly to go about it, how do you do it? And in the middle of all that, Jane had to manage that. One staff person or a volunteer said, I don't agree with this thing, I think we should do this. But another one said, no, 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 I think we should do this. It, was, uh, it wasn't a nightmare, but it was a logistical Rubik's Cube. Re really hard. I don't know how Jane did it. I know the staff or the volunteers did it. We have volunteers who are also leaders at the food bank. We kind of deputize them to be able to handle these various components. Many of them have been with us for 20 years and longer, so they know their stuff. But Jane somehow, she was remarkable. I love her for it. And she kept a, a positive spirit. Uh, somebody would phone in and say, I've tested positive. We had to test them when they came in. We had all of these test kits provided by the health unit, all of these masks and everything else. We had to test them. And if somebody showed up and tested positive for COVID, we could not accept them, right? So we had to find other things for them to do, maybe to work in the garden by themselves, by the back of the food bank or whatever. But I, I wanted to include this part in these in the video series about the pandemic and the change that it had made because I saw the absolute best of London in those days. The absolute best. We were up against it. It was really hard for us as a community. And yet our volunteer numbers doubled in a time of restraint and in a time of isolation. How do you explain that? Well, you can't explain it that um, the food bank does such a fantastic job. That's not what it was about. You have to explain it that the people of London, Ontario have a heart. And when it's confronted, they will respond. We see this in other issues as well that happen in London. You know, uh, certain tragedies that we have faced in recent years, like the family that was killed and other things that, um, you know, we have big marches and we come together and we do the things that are necessary. But those are events. And, you know, it, it's somewhat easier to come to an event and do those things. How do you extrapolate that compassion out over the course of three years during a time of real medical restraint and emergency? We had to manage it for three years. And to Jane's credit and the others, they did. I had to work out in the community trying to follow all the guidelines and everything like that that was there. But everywhere I went, there was this openness. People wanted to donate. People uh, wanted to volunteer at the food bank or do something that they could in their community. Look at the faith groups. I mean, we, at that time, we, we put out the, the greenhouses. Now, these were 10 by 20 size greenhouses. So there's a metal grid kind of thing on it covered with plastic sheets. They all are in a box about this big. So Business Cares bought a number of those greenhouses and we distributed them to all of those houses of faith. They set them up and even though the pandemic was on, they could come in there individually or respecting distance rules and guidelines. And they would go in there and they would grow fresh food for their neighborhoods and they didn't bring it to the food bank. That wasn't the idea. They take it out into their neighborhoods to families or agencies that were in need. And they did it. And, and those greenhouses thrived, except for one, they're all still up there and they're all still working. You get it, right? I mean, London, for all of its difficulties, is amazing when it needs to be the, re the resiliency, the resolve, the ability to overlook the differences is an amazing thing. And that, in many ways, is one of my favorite aspects of the food bank. You sit there on any day and you come down to the food bank, let's say, and you see a Muslim working alongside of a Hindu. You know, uh, probably, you know, well, we have hundreds of people that are conservatives that help us at the food bank. We have hundreds that are NDP, hundreds that are liberal. I don't know how many libertarians we have, but they never talk politics. They, they might roll their eyes at something that happened at a press conference or something the night before. But the truth of the matter is that's not what they're there for. And they know it. Whatever it is, the creeds that they're following or the political thing that they're doing or their culture, there's something common in all those things that says when a family is hungry, you feed them. And they do it. And they do it without all the, the definitions and, you know, guides and things like that that come with it and all the creeds. They just, they just live their compassion. And they did it. And I watch it day after day after day. The difference now, though, is those numbers are doubled. So there's way more people and all of that diversity. And yet they're still there and they're still working. And as I said, many of them have been there for a long, long time. The pandemic, uh, when Jane and I first 
started the food bank, we said, it's going to have to be a volunteer driven organization. I was volunteer. Jane was volunteer. We had no money, but there was this huge need that was being discovered in the community. But from the very beginning, volunteers, volunteerism was at the heart of it. And it remains so. The difference now is it's been proved. It's been proved that people who volunteer and care for their community can come out in the thousands and consistently do something over a lengthy period of time, even years, and help organizations and others get better because of that kind of commitment. The food, food bank's success is found in that heart. Now, sometimes that heart is in the community and people that donate. It might be in the agencies that we assist who are desperately trying to help other people in need. Or it might very well be at the food bank itself, in people like Jane, people like our staff, but the thousands of volunteers that are down there who over the course of the year never gave up. They found ways of surmounting the obstacles that were there, even a pandemic, and they made a huge difference. Their fingerprints are all over the food bank, everywhere. They're everywhere in making the whole thing work. That's what's different. The, it, they stayed. After the food bank was over, those folks stayed. So even though our numbers doubled, they didn't recede or go back home or back to work alone uh, after it was all over. They kept their commitment to their community in the hours that they served at the food bank, maybe in picking up food, right? Or helping uh, as a volunteer of ours, helping another agency who needed some volunteers and we sent them that way, whatever. It's systemic now. The, the food bank numbers that we have are huge. They're just huge. And they stayed with us through thick and thin, but they doubled during that time. And now we've got double the blessing of the heart of London being right in the food bank for all of its diversity. And they're still there, still collaborating and still making it work. That's sustainability. And that's what the London public has done and the London community has done. It's one of the bright spots of my life.